Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to my Proxmox course. Believe it or not, we are up to class number 14. Yes, 14. It feels like the series is just flying by, almost like I just started recording it yesterday or something like that. I just can't believe how fast time is flying. Okay, well, actually, I'm recording the majority of these episodes in one sitting in one day, so for me, it feels like today. Anyway, in today's class, we're talking about shared storage. And by shared, I'm not referring to NFS shares or Samba shares. I mean, Proxmox is built on Linux. You could create those things on Proxmox if you wanted to. But what I'm talking about instead is mounting storage from other servers. It's called shared storage because essentially, if you have more than one Proxmox server, which, you know, right now we don't, but if you did, you could actually share resources between servers. But shared storage is still useful even with just one server, as we're going to find out here very shortly. And I mentioned earlier that we're not creating NFS or Samba shares in this video, but Proxmox can connect to those share types. And specifically, I'm going to walk you guys through the process of connecting to an NFS share to serve as shared storage. So let's dive in. All right, so at this point, what I'm going to do is show you guys how to add network storage to your Proxmox server. This is yet another video that not all of you will be able to follow along with. If you do have a network attached storage device on your network, then you should be able to follow along. On my end, I actually use TrueNAS, but it really doesn't matter. You can use Synology, NetApp, QNAP. There's a number of others out there. The idea is that we're going to create NFS storage and then mount that storage here on our Proxmox server. This also opens the door for potentially setting up high availability, which is something that we'll be covering later in the series. Now again, not all of you will be able to follow along because not everyone has a network attached storage device on their network. So even if you don't have that, you can just watch the video and take notes and just understand how everything works. I think that's good enough if you don't have access to the appropriate hardware. Now there's two volumes that I'm going to be showing you guys how to mount in this video. The first is going to be used for backups. And the second is what's called shared storage. Shared storage is good for high availability. Now, if you have a gigabit network, as I'm sure a lot of you do, then backup storage is going to work good enough. Sure, gigabit is a lot slower than 10 gigabit, but it's fast enough for backups. However, if you have a gigabit LAN and you try to implement shared storage for clustering and high availability, it'll actually work, well, fine enough, I guess, if you have more than one VM accessing shared storage at a time, then they're going to slow down to a crawl. Now, as long as all of your VMs aren't doing anything intensive all at the same time, you'll probably still find gigabit slow when it comes to shared storage, but it'll probably be fast enough. So the reason why I bring this up is just so you keep in mind that it's really important to understand that if you have a gigabit network, there's only so much that you can do before it becomes a bottleneck. If nothing else, just have reasonable expectations. And you might be wondering what I mean by shared storage. Shared storage is storage that's, well, shared. When we add more servers to our cluster later on, each of those servers will be able to access that storage. So essentially I could have one NFS volume, one NFS share, and every single host, basically every Proxmox host, will be able to read from and write to that share. And that's all well and good, so long as you don't have too much going on at once. But anyway, just manage your expectations and you should be fine. Now, what I'm going to do right now is open a new tab and I'm going to access my TrueNAS server. And here's the login screen for that. So I'll go ahead and log in and I'll paste in my password. And here we have my TrueNAS server. So if you haven't seen TrueNAS yet, well, this is what it looks like. TrueNAS is not something that I actually cover on my channel because my friend Tom Lawrence, he does a great job already. And honestly, there's no reason for me to cover it considering he does such a great job. Definitely check out his channel if you are curious about TrueNAS. He has a number of videos on TrueNAS that'll teach you everything you need to know. Now, in my case, what I'm going to do is actually create a new storage volume 
or basically a pool for Proxmox to use. So on this screen, I have all my pools. And as you can see, I already have one for Proxmox. Now what I'm going to do, instead of actually using my existing Proxmox pool, this is for a production system, I'm going to create a brand new pool. So let's go ahead and do that. And this is adding a new data set within the pool. I'll call it PVE Tutorials, because that's what I'm using it for. And we need to set the permissions. And I do understand if you're not using TrueNAS, then obviously none of this applies to you. But you know what? This is what I have, so this is what I'm going to use. I think these options are good enough. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and submit this. And then underneath this, what I'm going to do is add yet another data set. I'm going to call this one PVE hyphen backups. And I'll submit that. So we have PVE backups right here. And what I'm going to do is create yet another data set. And I'll call this one PVE shared. I'll submit it. So I have these two data sets right here, PVE backups and PVE shared that I'm going to be using for the remainder of the series. What I should do now is actually set the permissions for those data sets and ensure that the Proxmox user that I've already created in TrueNAS has access to these particular data sets. So I'm going to create the permissions up here. I'll edit permissions. I'm going to set the owner. I'll set that to Proxmox. I'll do the same thing for the group. And I need to apply both. So I check those two boxes there. I'm going to give the group full access. I'll click Apply Permissions Recursively. And I'll also have it traverse as well. I want to make sure that these permissions are applied to everything underneath this main data set. So PVE Tutorials is the upper level. Then the PVE Backups and PVE Shared Data Stores are underneath that. So by checking all of these options, I'm ensuring that the changes that I'm making here are going to apply to those as well. So I don't have to go in and manually make those changes to each of those one at a time. So let's save it. And now we should have everything set up here for PVE backups and PVE shared. But that just gives us the data stores. It doesn't actually make Proxmox able to access these data stores. So what I need to do actually is create some shares that Proxmox can access. I'm going to use NFS. I'll add a brand new share here. And then I'll select the path to the data set that I created, at least the first one here. PVE backups. And then under advanced options. I'm going to map all to the Proxmox user. And when it comes to group, I'll map all to Proxmox as well. And that'll ensure that the permissions work out. And for authorized networks, I do want to restrict this. My servers are on the following subnet, 172.16.249.0. And I'm going to add another one here, 10.10.10.0, both slash 24 subnets. If you recall, we have the management network, and then we have the VM network here as well. I always like to restrict my NFS shares because I want to know what's actually connecting to them. What I probably should do is add individual host here instead of the entire subnet, but I didn't want to make this tutorial too long. So anyway, what I'm going to do is submit this. Now, what I'm going to do is add yet another NFS share, and I'll be adding it for the other data store that I've created. So I'll select that here. And I'm basically going to create it the exact same way. And 
And that should be all we need to do for that. So let's go back here to Proxmox. And what I'm going to do is add the new shares that I've created. So I'm going to go to the data center view. I want to add these particular shares to the entire data center. I want to make sure that each of the servers that I end up adding to the cluster also get access to those data stores as well. So let's go to storage right here. And what I'm going to do is add storage. I want to add NFS storage. And for the ID, it's not asking for an ID number. It's not like your VM ID or anything like that. This is essentially the name. So what I'm going to call this is PVE backups. I'm just going to give it the same name as the actual share that I'm mounting, and that makes it very easy to do. Now here for server, what we want to do is add the IP address or the fully qualified domain name, if we have one, to the server that contains the NFS share that we want to mount. In my case, it's storage.home-network.io. That's actually the name of my true NAS. And for the export, I'm going to type the actual path to that NFS share. In my case, that's going to be slash MNT, volume one, and it should be, if I remember correctly, PVE hyphen tutorials. And then the first one, the one I'm mounting right now, is PVE hyphen backups. Now here, what we want to do is select the types of objects that we plan on storing inside this NFS mount. So what I'm going to do is select container template, VZ dump backup file, and snippets as well. So basically I've selected everything except for ISO image and container. So that should actually be good enough for me. Let's go ahead and add it. So as we can see, it's added right here. And it also appeared right here. So as an aside, I think I did show you guys this earlier in the series, you could click on any storage volume and you can see the types of things that it allows you to store. Now, as you just saw, I had to select the things that I plan on storing, so that essentially allows me to enable or disable certain things for this particular storage. And here we have PVE backups, the one that I just added. And we should be able to store the things that I selected there in that menu when I first created this storage. Now, I have nothing stored here, actually. And I probably do need to clean my TrueNAS storage because, oh my gosh, I only have 260 gigs free, and considering the 4K content on my channel, I could burn through that pretty quickly. Anyway, let's go ahead and return back to Data Center, and let's add the other storage volume. Because I'm lazy, I'm just going to edit this one, and I'm going to just copy this right here. I'll click Add, and I want to add another NFS mount. And then for the export, I'll just change this to shared because it's the same path. The ID, I'll call it PVE shared. And the server again is storage.home-network.io. And it looks like it blanked out my export here, so I'll paste that back in. And I'll make sure I actually type the correct share name. And what I want to do is configure this. I already have a storage volume for backups here, so I'm not going to choose that. I am going to keep the disk image here. Container template, I should probably choose that one. And container, I'll choose that too. And as an aside, I really like the fact that you could just drop this down and not type the entire path manually. That's going to save me a lot of time. I actually didn't know that you could do that, so I guess I just discovered something new myself. I've always been manually typing the path to the share that I want to mount, but as you can see right here, Proxmox is able to query the server and get a list of all the shares. So what I should be able to do is scroll down and select the share, and here it is. I'll go ahead and add it. And now we have that created right here. So now I have a place for shared storage. So I can actually add virtual machines and have them store their disks right here in the shared storage. And that makes high availability better, like I mentioned, because if a VM disk is in shared storage, then migrating that VM to another host just becomes a lot faster. And I also have a place for backups right here. Now, earlier in the series, I went over backups. So since I do have a place for backups now, I'm going to go back here to backup. And this is the backup job that we created earlier. Let's go ahead and edit that. And the storage is currently set to local. 
and that's not good. We should probably use the NFS mount that I designated for the purposes of backups instead of the local storage, which will help ensure that all the backups created from this job will go to the external storage rather than local storage. At the end of the day, that's what we want. Now, PVE backups, that is an option here. Now, when I added this particular storage to Proxmox, if I didn't select the correct items to enable the correct features, then I wouldn't actually see it listed right here, but it is listed, so I guess I must have done something right. So I'll click on it. Now click OK. Now from this point forward, this particular backup job is going to send its backups over to my TrueNAS server. And that's pretty cool. Now how about we see it in action? I'll click on this server right here. And I'll just create a manual backup. I'll click the Backup Now button. And for the storage, I'm going to choose the PVE backup storage right here. And I'll leave it on snapshot. I think that's fine. And I'll click backup. Let's see what happens. And there you go. It looks like the job has completed. That's pretty cool. So if I go over here to PVE backups, I'll go here to backups itself. And then here in backups, we have this particular backup file right here. It's currently using 1.6 gigabytes. This is the backup file, so we can see that it's working. Now what I'll do is click over here to TrueNAS. I'll click on Shell, and then let's change directory into where that mount actually is pointing to. So I'm in that directory right now. So we have several different folders here, so I'm going to go into the dump folder, and these are folders that Proxmox itself created for me. And there we have the backup file. We have a log file and the actual backup itself. So we can see that the log file is 1.8 kilobytes. We have essentially 1.5 gigabytes when it comes to the backup file itself. So, as you can see, I was able to easily add additional storage to my Proxmox server, I was able to create some shares here on my TrueNAS server, mount those in my Proxmox server, and now I could benefit from both backups being on my TrueNAS server, as well as shared storage later in the series. So as you can see, shared storage is pretty useful, but we're not really using it shared. I mean, yeah, it's shared storage, but we're not sharing it with any other server, and it's not accessible from any other server because we only have one server. So how about we take care of that in the next class and set up a cluster? That's exactly what we're going to do in that video. So I'll see you there.